Andrew Schultz versus the Nelk Boys. Did you guys catch this interview? Now, this was one of the hottest spots of the week for me from an entertainment standpoint. Let me start from the beginning. I have Googled the Nelk Boys. Now, these guys, I got no heat with them. They seem like perfectly nice guys. They seem like hard workers. They seem to have some contacts. They're not afraid to put some hours in. I mean, I can pay some real compliments there. But I will share with you, as far as the backstory, I'm a little bit in the dark. These guys broke into MMA straight through Dana White. And I'm talking about back access and they're videoing and they're, they're doing a number of different things with MMA that for the most part is very hard to trace back to its origin. I mean, I, I looked into them, you're called the Nelk Boys. Okay, I'm going to assume we got brothers here named Nelk. And I don't now think that that is the case. And I, I tried to look in, like, where did they come from? What is their power? What is their magnitude? They got some followers on social media. And they do a lot of podcasting, and they're pretty consistent about it. I don't think any of that was an insult, right? Not meant to be, trying to set the stage. Because then you got Andrew Schultz. And Andrew Schultz has turned in to a very big deal for online entertainment. I met Schultz through Bellator. Scott Coker flew me out to New York and wanted me to do an interview with Andrew Schultz on a show called Flagrant. And I was not aware of his numbers. I was not aware how big and successful this was. And I've only done one other podcast where I have felt it. Like, that's an interesting word to use, that where you have felt it, where you'll be walking down the street and somebody will say, hey, caught you. And that was Rogan. Hey, caught you on Rogan. I'll get a, a text to my private number. My Twitter lights up. I mean, I've done a number of interviews, but I don't ever feel it. And then I do, Schultz says, guy was huge. So if you can get a like guy like that to come and be your guest, like this is the model for building anything online. Whether it works or not, I have my own thoughts on it. I'll just share with you. That's the model. You go out, you get somebody that's got really good numbers. You have them on, he hope. You hope that he advertises for you. You hope to grab and share some of his viewers and build your own channel, right? Like that isn't rocket science. I'm just sharing that's how it's done. And when you're a guy like Andrew Schultz, who is very big, Flagrant does really, really well. I would imagine that's a difficult guest to get. I just would imagine, as nice as Schultz is, that he gets asked those a lot and you can only get pulled in so many different directions. So there's Schultz, right? There's your setup. Now you got your split screen. Schultz by himself, the Nelk boy is over here, and you go about 20 minutes in, and Schultz is performing. Schultz has showed up to be a good guest, which is what he had agreed to do. Doing his part. He's being funny. He's making some level of content that people want to see. They're not. They're not. They are laying an egg with almost no effort. And at one point, dude takes out his phone. It appears that he's texting. He, at a minimum, is reading something on his phone. It appears that he's sending a text while they're doing a live back and forth. And you can get away with that. No problem. If you're having a conversation, everything's going good. You're, you're putting the guy over. You're building him up. They were doing nothing, and he took a break right in front of Schultz. And it's not Schultz's show, right? Like, Schultz doesn't need to turn in X amount of minutes for this show. He could help him out with that 20 minutes that he already did. It'd be the guest for the day, and everybody would be great. But Schultz stays very calm. But he let, he let him know that that irritated him. I'm trying to act the way Schultz acted, in case you didn't see it. He stays very calm. But he does let him know that he has human feelings. The guy asked him, is there something wrong? And Schultz answered the question, yeah. You don't appear to be prepared today. Not only are you not prepared today, I think I just saw you take a text. So the guy... <laughs> now, the guy was pretty smooth, right? Like, that could put you in a couple of different positions. That might piss you off, but it also might embarrass you. It also might make you realize you're... Oh, my goodness. You're right. I'm... So and put that phone down. Dude rolled flawlessly into claiming that he had notes on his phone. He had notes on his phone about Schultz and about the interview. He was prepared. He just needed to look down at his notes. So Schultz rolls right with it. Now, Schultz knows he's lying, but he just rolls right with it. He doesn't call him a liar. Okay, well, 
that asked me what question was on there. And the guy's like, yeah, well, I, I was going to, because, you know, I was looking at my phones, I, 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 I take some notes, and I, it's just, there was some stuff. He starts buying himself time, right? There was no note. There was no question. He still couldn't form a question, even after saying he looked down and had the question. The whole thing's a lie. So Schultz told me, say, I, I don't know if this is a character. He said, I don't know you well enough. I, I, I don't know if you're performing right now or, or if you are legitimately this incompetent in that role. But you can't have a guest on and not know about him. And, and I'll tell you what I think Schultz was trying to say, what he was trying to say. If the dude had notes on his phone, I mean, let's just say that you did it. And first off, you're a weird guy if you do that. You ever seen somebody, they got a speech to give and they pull out their phone? Don't do that. For one, don't do that. But secondly, if you did have notes on your phone, legitimately, because you weren't familiar with a guy, who's your guest, who's bigger than you. I mean, right, like, there's a thing here. This dude seemed like a perfectly nice guy, but I can't produce his name for you. I could pick him out of a lineup, but I can't produce his name for you, and it is opposite Andrew Schultz. Schultz is ready, Schultz is carrying weight, dude's looking at text messages, now dude's lying to Schultz, and he's trying to cover his tracks, he's trying to say, hey, I haven't done anything wrong. The perfectly normal conversation, we're flowing back and forth, I even prepped for it. All right, so Schultz stays cool with him. And the, the overall part that I did appreciate, and it is where I can stand with Schultz particularly, is was the guy playing a character. A number of people, when you do that, and when it's their show and they have the power, they just won't put it out. They cannot stand to look bad in any fashion. They would lose sleep if they knew somebody like me is over here is going to comment on them and didn't say all these wonderful things, and not put it out. This guy was a willful participant, and I, I must give him that credit. I've been in situations where you make great TV or you make a great interview, and they can't take the bumps, so it never sees the light of day, which does bring you back to Schultz's point, which was perhaps this guy was playing a character in the first place. Perhaps he really didn't act as though this show wasn't worth being ready for. Schultz as a guest wasn't worth knowing. Taking a text message live was worth lying about. I don't know. I don't actually know those things. I had one with a guy who's out of Seattle. And it's just a radio show. And the, the guy was terrible. I, I mean, each thing that he asked was terrible. Like, it, it was specific to the UFC. And he asked me, hey, do you think the, do you think the UFC could ever get mainstream? Do you think they could ever come off a pay-per-view? And, you know, not only do we have the Fox deal at that time, I was the host of the show that Fox was producing called UFC Tonight. So he's literally asking me if, if he thinks we could get off of it. And it was just this weird thing. And you let it slide, right? You smarten a guy up. Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, had some great luck with a new contract with Fox and getting out there and getting television, getting fights that are on Linear TV as opposed to, I'm trying to educate him as we go. And he gets to like the fourth or fifth one. He says, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying this interview. So, so many people have told me that I shouldn't cover MMA, that I don't know a lot about it. I said, hey, man, those people are your friends. You don't have the foggiest idea what you're talking about. And I said, that's really not the big part. The big part is that you didn't even try. Like you're asking me questions from 1993. And now you're telling me that your own inner circle is telling you, you don't know enough about it to go out and cover it. You didn't believe them. Here you are. They're right. Either engage and get involved or call it a day because you haven't said one thing that's within reality. He buries it. He buries the whole piece and never puts it out. It's like, oh my God, that that was the piece. Right? Like that, that was the piece. I did another guy, Michael Landsworth. I don't even talk to Michael anymore. I used to, I consider him a friend. I did a piece with him. I did 20 minutes like this. 20 minutes. He told me he wanted a 20 minute piece. I call in, he puts me on hold. You know, hold on a telephone is a little bit rude when you're the one that scheduled it, but, but hold on a Skype where I'm looking at you and you're looking at me. Hold, that's a weird thing to do. Now, hey, hold on one second. I'm back. Totally different than 20 minutes. Okay, great. So I do the whole thing and then we have this conversation and I'm performing. 
right? I got high energy and I'm coming out and I'm telling them about whatever it was. I'm performing. I'm doing my job. We go through 20 minutes of it and he says, all right, hey, let's start this thing. Honey, are you ready? His, do his daughter ran his camera. She says, honey, are you ready? My God. I said, that you, we're not going? That was the piece. You asked me for 20 minutes. I agreed to 20 minutes. I got a team here too. I got other things to do. That was the piece. How did you not record? I not only hung up, hung up and blocked him, I have never spoke to him again. It was so brutally rude and him, him not understanding. And when I'm scolding you and telling you it's rude and hanging up on you, that too is the piece. And so I got to give the guy credit and I do wonder like Schultz, was that a character? Or was that incompetence? Either way, he did have courage. He pushed that button. He recorded the whole thing. And he brought it to us. So there's that.